Hi, I'm Mike. I'm down here in my basement sitting next to my model trains and I want to talk today about the difference between DC and DCC train control. You may have heard these terms used in the industry of model railroading and I'd like to just summarize the differences between the two and the many advantages that DCC actually offers over DC. So let's start with DC. DC stands for direct current. Direct current is simply you have an engine on a track with a light most likely and you increase the voltage to that track and the higher the voltage the faster the train the faster your engine goes when you decrease the voltage the engine slows down the light probably dims out as well and when you turn the engine off there's no power to the track at all, at all. so nothing on that track is using any power everything is off and that's all there is to it for DC. When you want to change direction of the engine, there's a, usually a direction switch on the controller, and it simply switches the polarity of the two rails, making the engine change direction. So it's very, very simple and straightforward. DCC, on the other hand, is much more involved, but much more exciting. DCC stands for Digital Command Control. And the way it works is you have a controller, and you have your locomotives, but the difference is the locomotives actually have small computer boards that are assembled inside them. And you have actually a constant voltage to the track. And when you want to control one of your engines, you simply dial in that engine's address, and you can make the engine go faster or slower. You can even stop the engine and can keep the light on. You can turn the light on and off while the engine is running. You have basically a lot of different options. And one of the biggest advantages of DCC is that you can have multiple engines running on the same track. You can even have them at different speeds, different directions. So the level of realism is much greater in DCC. The only drawback to DCC is it's going to be a lot more expensive price-wise. Anytime you purchase an engine, you have to buy what they call a decoder. And what the decoder does is it takes the signal from the controller and tells the engine exactly what you want to do. Do you want to speed up? Do you want to slow down? Do you want lighting effects? Do you turn the light on and off? And those decoders can run anywhere from 25 upwards of over $100 for the advanced sound ones. So I have a bunch of engines that have decoders in them for my DC set, and most of them cost anywhere from 25 mostly up to about $35. The other thing is the controller. A DC controller will run you anywhere, you can probably find them as cheap as $30, whereas a DCC controller is going to be much more expensive. Starting the, the cheapest ones I've seen are the MRC Prodigy Express and they start at $112. I've seen some more advanced ones that offer various advantages that can run anywhere from two to four hundred dollars. So it's really a matter of weighing the cost, the complexity, what you want for realism. But I am a real fan of DCC and I want to show you some of the I'm going to show you some of the differences between the two technologies. So come along and let's take a look. Okay, so here we have a simple DC controlled track. So here's my DC controller, and it's got standard control knobs, and I have my N scale track, this is N scale in this case, and I have my DC engine. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to simply turn the power up, and as I do that, the light starts to come on, and the engine starts to go. And as I turn the power down, the engine stops and the light turns off. And there's actually no power to the track now and the engine has no power to it. So with DC, because you're controlling the power to the track and not to the engine, you can only control one engine at a time. You do not have independent control of each of the different engines on the track. So now what I'd like to do is show a, an example of DCC. Okay. So here's an example of a DCC. This is a DCC layout, my very, very unfinished layout, but I have been able to enjoy some nice operating sessions with the use of DCC on my layout. So one thing you notice very different is there's a bunch of trains on the track here, and you'll see that the lights are actually on on the engines. So I have my Amtrak P42 right here, and the engine is stopped, but the light is still on. In front of my P42, I have an MP15 Norfolk Southern switcher, and you'll see the light is also on. These trains are on the same track. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to control the different engines. So what to do is I'm going to dial in the address 
For the P42, the address is 7, and for the switcher, it's 8. So I hit loco, and then I dial in 8, and hit enter. And now I have the ability to control the MP15. So I can turn the light on and off. And then I can control the forward and backwards movement of the train. So now the MP15 is moving, but the P42 is still idle behind it. So now the P42 is address of 7. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial in. I'm going to punch in loco and 7. And I'm going to hit enter. And now the MP15 is still running, but I'm controlling the P42. So I'm going to increase my throttle. And there goes the P42. So now if I want to go back to the switcher, I can punch in that. It's 8 again. And I can increase the speed of the switcher. So now I have two trains sharing the same track. Two engines that are completely independently running. So for example, the switcher is still going in that direction. And on the passenger train, I can change directions. And the switcher is still heading that way. So these trains are running completely independent of each other. So I have the track is still active. I have power. In fact, you see the passenger car is lit up. Because again, we have constant power to the track. And I have actually run about seven, about six trains at once. And you have to obviously pay attention because my layout actually has several crossover points. And it can be a challenge to keep the trains apart. You don't want to have any collisions. So here's another engine. Here's an RS3 that I have up here. You see again the light is on. And the address for that engine is simply number five. And the way I like to keep track of the addresses of my engines is I just write a little label and I put the label on the boxes that I keep the engines in so I can remember. And that's a quick example of DCC. So now what I'd like to do is show some additional features and installation of a DCC decoder.